we need to define the term which is the surface heat capacity. This is the energy required to raise the temperature of a uh, unit area, one meter squared, of a planet's surface by one degree, and is measured in joules per meter squared per Kelvin. Now, we use the symbol C, with the subscript S, to mean the surface heat capacity of the body. And this is what it is, the energy required to increase the temperature of one meter squared by one Kelvin. And this is the equation we need. It should look familiar to the specific heat capacity, Q is equal to mc delta T, because, but in this case we're talking about per meter squared, not per kilogram. So remember the, the similarity there. So this is a starting point, the surface heat capacity. Now, what are we going to do with this? We have to look at problems of the greenhouse effect and the heating effect and, and use it to try to do an energy balance between the energy that's radiated and the energy that's absorbed. And that depends on the surface heat capacity. So we want to find the change of a planet's temperature over a period of time. It depends how much energy is absorbing. So we rearrange this equation. You know that uh, Q is equal to the energy, which is power times time, is equal to Cs delta T, which is here. And then we've taken the A and divided it both sides by A. So Cs delta T is equal to power times time divided by A. But you know that the power divided by the area is the intensity. More than that, we need to look at the two intensities. If this object is warmer than its surroundings, it will radiate some energy and will absorb some energy. The radiated energy, the intensity of radiation uh, emitted, will be greater than the intensity of the radiation that is absorbed. And because there's a difference, then you will get a temperature change but you need to find out the net radiation. So what is this temperature change? So this temperature change divided by this equation by Cs is equal to power divided by area, in other words intensity, times by time divided by Cs. Um, but we're looking at the net radiation. So power over A is the intensity. So they look at the, the intensity of the radiation which is goes into the substance and subtract from that the intensity of the radiation that is emitted from the substance. And this difference will give you an idea of calculating the change in temperature. Uh, students, according to the IB, should be aware of the limitations of this model and suggest how it may be improved. What are the limitations? Um, this calculation of delta T assumes that the intensity of um, the influx, the radiation that's coming in, is constant uh, day and night, which of course it isn't. Also, as the temperature increases, the eye out, the intensity of the uh, radiation that, which is emitted, will also increase because the object becomes hotter. Remember Stefan Bolton's law, which is that the, the radiation power is proportional to the temperature to the power of 4. And another thing is that since radiation, which is output, depends on the temperature, we basically have a, a differential equation which becomes rather complicated unless you start to use calculus, and we're not going to use calculus. So we just have to do it in small steps and, and make the changes accordingly um, if we need to do this calculation. We can use a spreadsheet to, to do this because we can do it, take thousands of steps without having to use calculus to do this. So what is the power emitted by an object? The power is E, which is the emissivity. Sigma, the Stefan Boltzmann constant, 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8, the, times by the area, times T to the power of 4. This is the power that's emitted by an object. And the temperature is the temperature of the object. But there will also be power absorbed by the object from the surroundings, which is at another temperature, T2. And that power, which is absorbed, is equal to the emissivity, the same value, sigma, the same value, the A, the area, the same value, but on the surrounding temperature, 
to the power of 4. And if there's a difference in temperature, then you will get a, a difference in power. So the temperature will either rise or go down. So the net power transfer will be the difference between these two. We can simplify these. We can factorize, um, take out a factor of E sigma A, and it's basically the difference between the uh, temperatures, um, sorry, the, the difference between the fourth power of the temperatures. We have a, a question for you. Calculate the net power that you emit in the room. Uh, let's assume that you're a black body. Let's assume that you're a cuboid of height 1.8 meters, width 0.4 meters, and thickness 0.2 meters. Let's say your temperature is 37 degrees. Your surrounding temperature in the room around you is 20 degrees. But because you're warmer than the surrounding, you are going to be radiating more energy than you absorb from the surroundings. So you can find out what your net contribution is to the um, power in the room. Another question. If you know, uh, let's say that the average radiation falling on a lake is 240 watts per meter squared. Uh, the surface heat capacity is 4.2 times 10 to the 8 joules per meter squared per Kelvin. Calculate the time taken for the temperature to rise by 2 Kelvin. Now notice this is a huge number huge. So it is going to take a long time to be able to raise the temperature, but you can do this calculation using, this is the energy, which is the, you need the power times time. You have power and you need to find time. You know the area because it just take one meter squared. Take a CS, the value, delta T is two. Time will be something of the order of around 30 days.